January 2025 and Panasonic have just released a new firmware update for the CX350 camera, which activates the NDI output for free. On this video, I'm going to remind you how to download firmware and install it on the camera, set up the camera for NDI output, and we'll do a little bit of testing on a small network and see what sort of results I get with a few different pieces of software and hardware. Panasonic released the CX350 back in 2019 and one of the things I really like about Panasonic is they do continue to release updates for these cameras long into their lifespan. When the CX350 first came out to purchase an NDI license was $299 so in the latest firmware release that's now being activated for free. Now, because of the age of the camera, the type of NDI that's available on the CX350 is NDI HX version 1. And they are now up to HX version 3, which supports 4K. So there are some limitations on the CX350. So you can only use NDI at 1080. And at some stage in the future, they will drop support for NDI HX version 1. But as long as you've still got all the equipment that will work and function with it, there's no reason why you can't use this flavor of NDI for long into the future. Now, Panasonic did release a firmware update on Christmas Eve 2024, which had the NDI activation in it. But it seems that they found some issues with what they call zoom tracking, and they withdrew that firmware update fairly quickly. So they've now just re-released that in a new version at the end of January 2025. Let's take a look at how to download the firmware and get it onto the camera. At the time of releasing this video, the latest firmware version is 7.24. Click on the file link to download to your computer. This will be a zip file, so you need to unzip the file into a new folder. For this process, you're going to need an SD card that's been formatted within the camera. It doesn't need to be a huge card or a fast card and somewhere 16 gigs or above should be fine. In that folder you'll find an update.hdc file and you'll need to copy that file into the root directory of the formatted SD card. Place the SD card into the camera and follow the menu system to the Others menu. Under Information, you can check the version that you're currently running. With the SD card in slot one of the camera and the update.hdc file in the root directory of that card, you should get the option to update the firmware from the current version to 7.24 or higher if you're doing this procedure at a later date. With the camera powered from the mains power supply and ideally a battery, you can now proceed with the firmware update. This is going to take three to five minutes to complete and you should see the progress bar running across the screen. Once done, the camera will restart. You can now navigate back into the others menu and you should now be on the latest version. Now let's set up NDI. First scroll down to the network NDI HX menu. Prior to the upgrade, activation will be blank, but once you've installed the new firmware, it will now show that NDI is activated. In this case, when we go to network functions to select NDI, it is still grayed out, as we cannot select NDI when the network is set to Wi-Fi. To use NDI, we need to select LAN. When we go back into Network Functions, we can select NDI HX. This also requires a restart. Next, we need to select an HD recording format, as NDI will not work in 4K on this camera. This allows us to select the streaming format from a drop-down list. To communicate on the network, we need to check our IP settings. If you have a DHCP router or device, you can switch this on, but I prefer to set each device to its own static IP address manually. 
the status screen shows us the IP information and that we have a working Ethernet link. Once we exit to the main screen, we can now see that NDIHX is selected and the transmission icon is on. Now that we've set the camera up to output NDI, I'm going to do some testing on a small network that I've just set up here using a switch. I've got four Ethernet cables going into the switch. One is going to this laptop, the other is going to a second laptop, and then I have two 350 cameras both running in to the switch as well. All of the cameras and laptops are set up and running on the 192.168.0 IP range. So they're all on the same network. And I'm using the NDI Tools video monitor or studio monitor, depending on whether you're using a Mac or PC. Here I can see the output of both cameras coming up directly on screen and select between those from the network. On the NDI Studio, you have a certain amount of control of the camera parameters as well. You can change focus. There are tools on there to change pan, tilt, zoom controls on a PTZ camera but there's only so much you can do with the CX350. On this machine, I'm running vMix software and I'm able to bring in both of the inputs and I can switch between the cameras. vMix is basically switching software. This sends tally information back down the Ethernet cable to the camera and I'm actually getting tally lights in the viewfinder on the camera as I select and deselect the camera. I've also been trying to use a Magewell Pro Connect NDI to IO converter box. This takes an Ethernet in and has HDMI and SDI out on this particular version but I haven't managed to get this to work. According to the specifications in the paperwork, the, this should work fine with NDI HX, but I have seen reports in forums on the internet where going back for several years with people saying they weren't able to use these with the CX350 and Magewell had come back to that and said, you need to talk to Panasonic, it's their problem, ours is working fine. And there doesn't seem to have been any update to that. So it does look like there may be some incompatibility with some firmware and hardware. On the PC laptop using vMix, it's been absolutely perfect. It sees the camera every time. So that's a really nice piece of software to use for NDI inputs. We have also done some testing with this on Apple TV using an app called Sienna, which takes NDI in, and that seemed to work again very successfully. So this update is to NDI HX, as I mentioned earlier on. Due to the hardware in the camera, you can't run higher versions of uh, NDI HX, which would allow 4K across the network. So we are restricted on the CX350 to 1080 at 60 frames a second, about 14 megabit per second. But that should be perfectly reasonable for um, many uses, multi-camera inputs of cameras into something like vMix. One of the things I've seen on, on the internet is people saying you can use multiple cameras or almost unlimited number of cameras and outputs with NDI and you do need to be a little careful because for every item you put on the network using that bandwidth and HX is a smaller bandwidth than full NDI but it does start to eat into your bandwidth if you're running a gigabit ethernet there's only so many cameras you can uh, 
put on that network before you will eventually start getting some network congestion and then you'll have all sorts of problems with picture breakup etc so just be mindful of what sort of infrastructure you're using and have got in place and what the capability of that is and once you go up into very high-end networks then you can obviously put a lot more cameras monitors etc on the network so that's it from me do let us know in the comments below how you get on with it how it works for you or if you have any questions and i'll try and get back to you and don't forget to subscribe and watch out for any future updates